All right, let's take a look at Buffalo Trace kosher wheat. It smells like candy. Very, very like candy cherry nose. Candy cherry. It has the Buffalo Trace signature cherry notes. And then it but smells like amplified. just. And that just smells like generic, like hard candy too. Like. I get a little bit of it. You know, it almost, like, like, almost smells like if you just had a, a, a whole bunch of all the different flavors of unwrapped Starburst maybe. sitting there. I was trying to get like a like a mild version of that. <laughs> you re do you remember the? Um, do you remember like the uh, big lollipops, like the spiral lollipops? Yes. yes. That's what it reminds me of. I definitely get that. That's that's a better description. Like just like a generic sweet hard candy flavor, mm. and that's what it reminds me of. And then obviously like the generic Buffalo Trace cherry. Yes, but it's like a candy cherry. It's not like it's not a drier cherry and it's not like mm -hmm. it doesn't smell like every other Buffalo Trace cherry. You can tell it's a Buffalo Trace product. Yeah. But it's it's sweeter. It's very sweet, yeah. And then I can't really get anything else. Maybe a little bit of apple or pear, maybe. But it's faint. It's like another faint fruit smell mm -hmm. that I can't put my finger very, on. But... It, it is very faint because I'm not getting it. And I mean, like, you have that generic bourbon smell, too, that I don't really know how to explain. It's not brown sugar. It's not oak. It's not... It's like where it smells like a bourbon to somebody who can't pick apart the, the different... Yeah. It smells like a generic mid mid range bourbon to someone whose nose isn't nuanced for it. Yeah. But well, let's see how it tastes. Very sweet. Wow, is that sweet? Mm -hmm. It's not like it's not like a sugary sweetness though. It's uh, almost like to me a syrupy kind of sweetness. If that makes sense. Honestly, that candy note I was talking about, I get it all on the front of it. Like the end of it is a little more like spicy, like mm -hmm. a little bit of baking spice. Mm -hmm. But like the like front, a, like an all, but even that, like it's like an all spice or like yeah. almost like a generic rye. Yeah. But very very faint. Yeah. Rye. Like it's, I get a ton of candy. I get like the big lollipop. I get juicy fruit. I get. What else did I get here? Like maraschino cherry for sure. Yes, hundred percent. I might have to call this the, I think this is the sweetest legit bourbon I have. Because it is a weeded bourbon, it is not a wheat whiskey. For something that is not finished and anything else, I think I might have to agree that this is the sweetest thing I've ever had. Right, I'm, I'm talking straight bourbon, this is like, you know, the ones that use the, the winter wheat and even the redemption weeded that is mm -hmm. notoriously sweet because it's 45% wheat. This has sweeter notes than that. It's also a slightly lower proof. This is, but. yeah, I, I, I'm trying to think of something that this is, can compare to this, but like Maker's Mark is not nearly as sweet as this. None of them are. The 1792 is nope. not as sweet. The Redemption maybe, but it's a different kind of sweetness. Same, yeah, same with um, Bernheim's. Like, the wheat whiskeys I've had are not as sweet as this. Right. This literally tastes like candy. Uh, it, it, I'm, this is a dessert whiskey for sure. No, I wouldn't even call this a dessert whiskey. Yeah. I would I would reserve something a little more savory and oaky, like with like the vanilla okay. and like chocolate flavors. This one I would say is more like this is something that I would have on a hot summer afternoon as my like sipping whiskey. I can I can see that. Yeah. Like this reminds me of like a sweet tea almost, like a lemon mm -hmm. sweet tea. Mm -hmm. Like southern sweet tea is probably what I would compare this to and I would definitely sit this on like a hot summer day um, I wouldn't necessarily and, call it dessert though and at 40 bucks this is really good like it has a lot of complexity to it it has mm -hmm. a really interesting flavor that nothing else has given us For 40 bucks buying something very unique is not super easy to do no unique and, nuanced and complex like getting all three in a $40 whiskey is pretty hard to do I'm really interested in what they, how they pick these um, barrels. Cause I'm of, really interested in what the other two recipes are like too. That too, yeah. Because one is a rye, and I want to say one's a corn. I don't remember what the third one is. I know the second one's a rye. It just, it makes me interested because, like, obviously, like we know what Weller's tastes like. Mm -hmm. 
this does not taste anything close. No. The barrel, the barrel has to be what's that significantly different. There's got to be. I mean, there's got to be difference in the mash bill too. I don't because think the they, mash bill is too different because if the mash bill was that drastically different, like. Well, I think that when I say different, I mean like I think there's a little more wheat in this than there is in Weller. They use the same. I would I would assume that they use the same wheat because the wheat isn't the part that that makes this a kosher recipe. Like I said, it, it has to do with the barrel. So. I think that's what it is, and I'm curious about what kind of wood they used or what kind of barrel they used. Because mm-hmm. I'm thinking that it's all. It's got to be some sort of new oak. I think it's just something about how it's prepared or how or like where it's from or what kind of new American oak it is. It's got to be. Because it is. I mean, it meets all the char- It meets all the the requirements to be a bourbon, so it has to be a new oak barrel. Mm-hmm. I don't know what. I'd have to do more research to see what's necessarily different. But it's American is... oak. I just don't know where they're getting it from or what makes it different. Like, mm-hmm. are, they, are they charring it differently? Or are they? That could be it. It could be an un... It could be like a barely charred one. I don't think it would be as dark as it is if it was barely charred. I think that it, it might be like... I don't know. Yeah, I don't know. It's I, I'm having a hard time this because... Really, it's really... I, I like it, though. My buddy didn't like it, and that's why he gave this to me, but... I don't know why he didn't like it, but... Your gain, I guess. Yeah, this is solid. I'm, I'd am be amazed at anybody who doesn't like this, because this is like... It, it literally tastes like a candy... Candy and a whiskey. We're getting into the kind of weather where this is going to disappear very quickly, and I'm going to have to subtract my best to not kill this bottle too fast. I don't I'm not gonna have. I'm not going to have the ability to find this easily. Mm-mm. That's the other thing. I don't know where this was purchased from, but it was not PA. Obviously. I don't know where he got it from. I believe he got it off a trade. I don't know where. I believe it's somewhere out in the Midwest. Or the or like Texas or California. But Yeah, this is one of those ones where I'm gonna be excited because you know that this will be a little more common once like Buffalo Trace gets up to speed with their new uh mm-hmm. rack house. That's the hope. Because I, I think they've realized that their products sell, and this is way better than regular Buffalo Trace. Hundred percent. This is so much better. I than I mean, regular granted, you're talking a different price, and we're talking a different mash bill, but it's so much better. If I had to pick between this, like spending twenty seven on a regular bottle of Buffalo Trace, or spending forty on this, I'd spend the forty on this every time. Easily. Because it now it, it takes Buffalo Trace and basically. Now here's a it. question: in terms of a weeded daily sipper, this or Maker's Forty Six? Um. I'll probably pick this. I love Maker's 46, but Maker's products all have that distinct bite mm-hmm. that doesn't make me want it. To, that doesn't want me to have it be a daily sipper. Fair. The closest one that would be a daily sipper is probably the Maker's like Maker's Cask Strength, because it's the Fair. easiest to drink of any of them, hands down. But, but it's also 110 I think, proof. I think I would still pick this over that, at least as a daily sipper. I don't need 110 proof in it. That's sipper. what I mean. Like because of that factor, I would probably pick this. Which, yeah, I'd, I'd, I'd say uh, I, I want you getting this bottle from him. 100%. Like, this is one of those things where, like, if I saw it, I might not pick it up just because, like, eh, it's a Buffalo Trace product, but I'm now actually surprised. It. Yeah, I know. I'm really surprised at this. I, I was excited to hear what you thought. Oh, that is... Can you please not? Wow. <laughs> Can you please not? <laughs> <laughs> okay, whatever. All right, but yeah, this is... I mean, I would, I would continue to have this on the shelf. Easy. 